This is Josiah Plays Sunless Sea. Okay, hello, and we are here again. We have we are out sailing around exploring, and we just reached this new place called Varchus or Varkus, Varkus, uh, and we're gonna learn what we can learn here. Apparently, there's a lot of mirrors. The mirrored city where light was always the law. The burning white light of Varkus. The walled city of Varkus is a tangle of green vines and luminescent fungal flowers slow blooming around moldering stone. A quincunx of carved... Okay, I don't know what that word is. I've never seen that word in my life. I assume it has something to do with... Five... Quincunx. Quincunx of carved stepped towers rise over the walls and pour burning white light into the bleak sky. A rough shadowed path leads from the docks to the mirrored gates of Varkus. Two towering carved stone lamps throw their light on the angled mirrors and a blue cloaked guard stands in the reflected pool of light. The city is a beacon against the tree-hushed, sprawling darkness of the Elder Continent. In the far distance, a vast mountain glimmers. This place sounds dramatic. There's a lot of stuff to do here. Uh, the most logical thing to do first is save. Even though I just loaded a save from arriving here, so really I didn't need another save, but whatevs. Um, okay, I can choke on the smell. It is overpowering. Sweet. It comes from the fungus growing wild all over the city's stones. The Zalos can wave me over. They are sitting on some upturned crates on the docks, playing a game with mirrored chips and stylized snakes made of bone. That sounds cool. Gonna ask the guard a few questions. Never a bad idea to gather a little intelligence before heading into unknown waters. Or cities, as the case may be. We can tell the guard I wish to enter. Well, what else are gates for if not to go through? That uses up something awaits you. And I can compile a port report. The Admiralty will want to know. Let's start with the port report. The mirrored city and its glories. Tone down the details of the light and its brilliance. You don't want to inspire envy in the Admiralty staff. Got a port report. Hey, cool. Side of option. I'm looked up that word for me. Or for himself. But also for me. Looked it up anyway. A quincunx is apparently an arrangement of five objects as trees in a square or rectangle, one at each corner and one in the middle. Alright, makes sense. The trees, pillars, towers, anything like that. I guess it could be any kind of object arranged in such a way. A quincunx. Well, I was right about the five part. Apparently I didn't know what the cunx part meant. and <laughs> Now we know. Now we know. Pretty exciting. New word learned. Not a lot of use for that word, okay? Like, admittedly, I'm not going to use that in common conversation, because how often is that actual thing a thing that you're going to be referencing, right? Unless you just deliberately start arranging things into quincunxes, just so that you can use the word quincunx, which... Sounds like the kind of thing I would do. <laughs> so, it's not entirely un unreasonable that I may arrange something in my apartment into a quincunx just so I can say that I did. I don't know what, though. I'll figure it out. Uh, anyway, I got a port report. So I think before I tell the guard I wish to enter, maybe I should do some of this stuff. Let's ask the guard a few questions first. The blue cloaked guard only acknowledges your existence when you step out of the darkness of the path and into the light from the lamps. The guard stands in the middle of the pool of light, looking warily at the darkness beyond you. Up close, the guard's blue cloak is threadbare and mossy along the hem. A pattern of embroidered suns runs along the collar, but the gold thread is dull. The coal around her eyes is smudged. Well, Tamas, she asks, 
Are you going to ask your questions? Or are you just going to stare? Well, I was thinking of staring for a while. And then maybe then some questions. I don't know. Could go either way. Her tone is brusque. But her expression is curiously eager. You do not think Varchus, Varkas receives many visitors. Your name is not Tomas. You correct her politely. Ask about the light. It all seems a bit wasteful. Possibly even ostentatious. So I actually can. It's a good way of describing certain dimer configurations. Hooray for pretentious words. Yeah. Yeah, well, good. Well, quincunx is for everyone. What if you had a quincunx of quincunxes? Like, you had a quincunx, right? But then you had, like, five of them arranged into a quincunx. It's infinite. You could have a quincunx of quincunxes of quincunxes. That would be crazy. Of course, since it's five, the, the proper way to do it would ha you'd have to have a quincunx of quincunxes of quincunxes of quincunxes of quincunxes. Right? So that there's, so there's literally five... Like, layers to it. Okay. That would be ridiculous. That would take up a lot of space, too. Unless you were quincunxing very, very small things. Can I ask about her? Does she like her job? Does anyone? I can ask about the city's customs. Best you know before you flout them. Easier to plan an escape route that way. Or I have no more questions. You're satisfied, or perhaps the guard's voice is beginning to grate a little. Well, let's correct her about our name. My name is not Tomas. The guard looks scandalized and tries to stop her, her ears. All those who are not Varkasi are Tomas. You have been touched by darkness, and it has taken your name. She fixes you with an admonishing look and adds, It is very ill-mannered to pretend you still have one. You begin to see a little why Varkas is not often visited. It looks like you will have to get used to being called Tomas if you wish to enter. Well, that's... That's rude. You don't even get your own name in this place. It's kind of like prison. You just get a number. Ask about the light. We must always walk in Mihir's light, so we burn our lamps night and day to banish darkness from the mirrored city, she tells you proudly. If we let darkness corrupt us, we would not be Varkasi any longer, but Tamas, like you. You wonder, is that so terrible a fate? Her mocking laugh answers you even before her words do. Yes, it would be terrible indeed, Tamas. And before you ask, she adds, No, I do not have any desire to leave Varkas. The rest of Neith has fallen from Mihir's greats, and I have no wish to join them. So these people are really into their light and their name stuff. Given we are referring to the reaction centers of photosynthetic systems, they are indeed quite small. They don't typically arrange in extended superstructures like that, though. Well, you know, it's the first time for everything. Personally, I'm a fan of extended superstructures of all types. Quincunxes in particular. Look, I've always liked quincunxes, I'm not gonna lie. I liked quincunxes before they were cool. <laughs> Um, ask about her. Does she like her job? Does anyone? It is a great honor to guard the mirrored gates. She snaps defensively. She gestures to the edge of the pool of light illuminating her post. It is very dangerous. Even a small stumble and I could fall into the dark. Her voice goes thready. It would be banished. I would be banished from Mir's grace. I would lose my name. That is why they only send the bravest outside the walls. Yeah, that does sound pretty terrifying. If you would always stay in the light at all times. Let's ask about the city's customs. Best to know before you flout them. Easier to plan an escape route that way. Don't touch the mirrors. Don't even look into the mirrors, she says, her voice hard. And try very hard not to dream. Were you expecting something along the lines of don't murder anyone, or only wear red on special occasions? Still, you nod and smile. 
I have no more questions. She looks a little disappointed, but does not try to engage you further. Uh, let's check on these Zaylers that want to wave us over with stylized snakes made of bone. You're not thinking of going in there! The Zaylers gawk at you in unconcealed horror. They take turns telling you gruesome stories of Varkas, which they no doubt invented whole cloth. Some are convinced that the Varkasi render Zaylers into tallow to light their city. Others say they steal shadows and sell them to their masters. All of them are convinced that they blind any strangers who dare to gaze too long upon their city's secrets. We're just willing to be paid, and then we're off, one of the Zaylers says, nervously fingering a mirror chip. I've only got one eye left, and I'd like to keep it. All right, well, let's choke on the smell. It's overpowering, sweet. It comes from the fungus growing wild all over the city's stones. The flowers have white waxy leaves which leave powdery traces on your fingers. The light coming from the city has the same camphorous quality. And the smell, perfume worn too many days on the body. Unread books left to turn to ink-stained pulp. A garden drowned and rotting in still water. That does not sound pleasant. Alright. Welp, let's tell the guard I wish to enter. What else were gates for if not to go through? She makes a mark in her ledger before ringing a brass bell. The mirrors of the gates rearrange to give you space to pass, but never once allow Shadow to touch the guard. Our ways are not yours, Tomas. Remember that, and walk in the light of me here. I don't know why the guard just had a totally different voice, because I just realized we're talking to the same guard. It's the same guard that we were asking all those questions. And suddenly, the guard is crazy! The guard has multiple personalities, and just changed her voice for no reason whatsoever. Uh, Varkas the Mirror's city quality is now one. Ooh, look at all this now. I'm going to save again on my second slot. Your eyes are blinded by the brilliance of the light. The verdant rot smell is even thicker. The heat of so much flame and reflected light presses oppressively against your skin. Your head pounds. It is a few minutes before your eyes adjust and you can look around. Brass lamps and gilded sconces hang from every wall and phosphorescent fungus grows moss-like upon doorways and ceilings. Cuttingly arranged mirrors catch every droplet of light and diffuse it till each cobblestone and rampart of the city is drenched and blazing and utterly without shadow. Who do you speak to? That feels it seems like it would be a really weird place. If everything was drenched in light and there were no shadows whatsoever, that would be super weird. I can speak to the firekeeper. Dressed all in saffron, a pair of thick fireproof gloves dangle from a silver chain at her waist. I can speak to the white-cloaked guard. The suns embroidered on his cloak are picked out with gold thread, and the edge is jeweled with carnelian. Mm. I can speak to the fungus carter. Her cart is piled high with fungal blooms and jars of algae painstakingly scraped from the surfaces of walls. I can speak with the jewel-turbaned youth. He is winking at you. That is a furtive wink or a flirtatious one. Only one way to find out. Or I can continue my explorations. Time to venture further than the outer district. Let's talk to the firekeeper. I've got good feelings about this firekeeper. You think Varkas has the same interior director as Unatco? I don't know what that is. Is it a United Nations thing? I'm too important to play guide to you, Tamas. She tells you before you even open your mouth. I'm the keeper of the Western Principal Mirror. She points up at the enormous multifaceted mirrors set atop each of the city's five towers. 
I'm only here because I'm looking for my idiot brother. He is probably busy pouring wine down some pretty dark-eyed boy's throat in a tavern. Is it a matter of great urgency, you wonder? He's late for his lamp checks in the sacred district, is her terse reply as she hurries away. If the Agnihatri found out, he'd be lucky to end up a lake dredger. I gained a memory of distant shores, and my occurrence... My Varkas the Tardy Lamplighter quality is now one. The brother of the Keeper of the Western Principal Mirror has a weakness for wine and dark-eyed boys. From Deus Ex. Oh, from the original Deus Ex? I haven't played that. I've only played Deus Ex Human Revolution. Really looking forward to Mankind Divided, though. Gonna play the balls out of that. Alright. UNACO is the organization the player is part of at the beginning, and the building has a similar hexagonal de design scheme. Ah, okay. Makes sense. Well, there's quite a bit of that sort of that sort of motif in Deus Ex Human Revolution as well. Let's talk to the white cloaked guard. Tamas! He presses his hands together in greeting, then gives you an anguished look. You look terrible! Are you sick with terrible outsider's disease? Or is that what your nose is naturally like? Hey, motherfucker. <laughs> Over your protestations, he gives you directions to the hospital. Ah, oh, the medics are all butchers, to be sure, but they walk in the light of me here, he adds breezily, and then points out the guardhouse in the vague direction of the Temple of Mahir, and a street of bars and gaming houses. We don't want to get a reputation for being inhospitable. He laughs as if he has just made a grand joke, and you laugh along weakly. The waves are flecked with light. Oh, I just got something awaits you. You've gained a fragment. The first tower bell has sounded. Varkas, the knells of the towers. Varkas has five mirrored towers. When each has sounded its bell, it is evening. Oh, so some of the people I could talk to are now gone. Yeah, Deus Ex Human Revolution is actually one of my top five favorite games of all time. It is one of my top five. I love it. I'm actually playing through it again right now. I mean, not right this exact moment, because, wow, that would be some awesome multitasking. I've got uh, three monitors, one with my stream stuff on it, one I'm playing Sunless Sea on, and on my third monitor, I'm also playing Deus Ex Human Revolution right now. No, not really. But I mean, like, you know, at this now in my life, I'm also playing through it when I'm not streaming or doing other stuff. Because I want to play through it again and get it fresh in my mind for the new one coming out. And I'm definitely going to be streaming the new one. Like, the second it comes out. The second! The very second! Maybe not the very second, but, like, the very day that it comes out, for sure. Um, let's talk to this jewel-turbaned youth. He looks utterly overjoyed to make your acquaintance. The bangles on his wrist flashing as he presses his hands together in greeting. My friends and I would be honored if you would attend a small gathering with us, Tamas. We are so eager to hear about the world outside Varkas's city walls. It seems an innocuous enough invitation, but then why does his gaze dart around so anxiously as he tells you how to find his mansion in the eastern district? The second tower bell is sounded. I now have one in the youth's invitation. Alright, let's time to venture further than the outer district. The mirrored city gleams invitingly. You'll get used to the smell in time. Ah, oh my god, there's a lot of stuff to do here. You walk galleried courtyards wreathed with vines and fungal blooms. Long straight roadways crisscross the length and breadth of Varkas, the stone worn by the wheels of carts and the tread of thousands of slippered feet. Lamplighters constantly check the fuel levels of the sconces and replace wicks. Firekeepers check the coiled spring mechanisms that control the angle of the mirrors. There is much to explore. Where will you go next? 
I can go to entertainments in Varkas. There are bars and gaming houses to the west. I can go to the hospital. The hospital lies in the shadow of the southern tower. I can go to the guardhouse. Down a side street, you can see the sun-blazoned flag from here. I can go to the temple of Mahir. It lies in the sacred district at the center of Varkas. I can go to the mansion of the jewel-turbaned youth. It is in the eastern district. I can go to the inn. At evening, after the fifth bell, each Tomas is assigned a room. Ah, I can't actually go to the inn yet, because I need the bells to be at five. Or there's the pilgrimage to Amaradi, which I need the nurse's approval, the respect of the guard, the Agnabhatri's interest, dual term and invitation to. So I need a, to do a bunch of other stuff here before I can take the pilgrimage to Amaradi. All right, so... Let's go to the hospital. I remember the guard saying we should go to the hospital. Let's go to the hospital. Actually, let's save again on slot three. Now let's go to the hospital. Are you feeling a little fevered? Do you hope to learn medical secrets? Or perhaps you just enjoy the moans and flushed faces of the sick and suffering. The Charitable Hospital. The Charitable Hospital is a long galleried building divided into a series of curtained wards with their own light sources and mirror series. A dour-faced nurse glances at you expectantly. Which ward are you here to visit? Ah, uh, boy. Man, there's a lot of options in this place. Okay, well, there's the Fungal Infections Ward. That sounds like a fun place to go. Yeah! Now it's a party! Fungal Infections for everyone! They keep it cool and closed off. The doctors and nurses all wear masks when they enter. How bad can a fungal infection be? Yeah, how bad indeed. We've got the mirrorless room. The ward is locked several times over, and the dour-faced nurse looks uncomfortable when you mention it. We've got the open ward. You see patients sprawled on their beds, playing card games and chatting to visitors. Most of them have minor injuries. I can offer the services of the brisk campaigner, but I uh, have not yet done enough stuff with the brisk campaigner. Do I actually have the brisk campaigner? I think I do, but... Maybe I don't even have the Brisk Campaigner. I don't remember. Nurse's approval no more than zero. Really? Offer the services of the Haunt Doctor. Now, I know I have him, don't I? If one is trust, he's prepared to come ashore. But I have to do some more stuff with the Haunted Doctor. I can offer my services. You have some skills. You could help the dour-faced nurse tend the patients on the open ward. But I only have a 24% chance with hearts, so... That's not so good. I don't think... You don't think I picked him up, Saito? Yeah, maybe I didn't. I think I have the campaigner. Yeah, I don't remember which ones I have. I can't check my officers at the moment. Well... You know... How bad could a fungal infection be? Fuck it, we're checking out the fungal infections ward. I don't know why, because we are. We're adventurers. The dour-faced nurse ties a mask around your face before leading you into the ward, which is set over two floors. The first thing you notice are the patient's constant racking coughs. We give them syrups and remedies, the nurse tells you, but lung bloom is a chronic condition. Lung bloom sounds pretty terrible. I don't want anything blooming in my lungs. That's just, that's just me. Coughing is the only symptom in the milder cases, but as you walk further in, you begin to see hands and feet covered in mold, and then chests budding with little mushroom cups and lichen, and even a young girl with a fringed red-orange fungal flower blooming in place of an eye. Ugh, that sounds bad. 
That's the fungus harvester's disease, the dour-faced nurse tells you sadly, pulling you away. It only gets worse in the heat and light, but what can we do? Um, I don't know. I guess you can't do anything. I got a fragment, a tale of terror. The third bell is sounded, and I gained one terror, which is okay. My terror's not so bad right now. Well, let's check out the mirrorless room. This is where we keep the mirror mad, she says with a shudder. The mirrors whispered to them, and instead of going to the sun priest, they whispered back. And you just abandon them in a locked room? We don't despise them. They're given food and water. Tending the mirror mad uses up almost as much fuel as Mihir's temple, because they can only be lit with direct lamplight. We don't dare let them near any mirrors. She shudders again. The mirror mad are worse than Thomas. They no longer serve Mahir, but other powers. Those that speak in dreams and visions. He refuses to say anything else, so this is some Cthulhu-esque shit right here. Saito says, what you hate about Twitch is how when it buffers the stream or pauses for adverts, it doesn't jump you up to the current footage, so you start building up a bigger and later lag. Really? I didn't know that. I didn't think it... I thought it always brought you to the current moment of footage, I guess... I'm wrong. Yeah, that would be obnoxious. That would suck. Well, it only does adverts on partners, right? Are there adverts on my stream? I thought, um... Because when I watch most streamers, most of the small streamers that I watch, they never have adverts. You have to reload every so often to get back up to speed. Oh, that sucks. Ugh. I don't think, unlike YouTube, I don't think this... There's like an option to, to disable or turn on advertisements on your stream here. So I gained some terror, the fourth bell is sounded, I gained seven fragments. Let's check out the open ward. Most of these wounds happen outside the city, on hunting expeditions or trade missions, the dour-faced nurse explains severely, raising her voice. Which is why most of these malingerers are guards. The patient nearest to her pretends to swoon. But what would I do away from your gentle, tender gaze, O oh fair nurse? Oh, this is not the nurse talking. But what would I do away from your gentle, tender gaze, O oh fair nurse? He clasps his hands to his bosom. Surely I would wither and perish. Well, see who withers when I give you your sponge bath, she retorts. And her patient draws up his blankets meekly though his mouth still curves up in a smile. The fifth bell has sounded. It is evening. Lost to terror. Gained a fragment. Oh, everything's locked now because of the bells. Alright, well, I've got to return to the city center. You're finished here. Can't go to the entertainments because of the bells. Can't go back to the hospital. Can't go to the guardhouse. Can't go to the temple. Can't go to the mansion of the Jewel Turbaned Youth. All I can do is go to the inn. So, to the inn it is. At evening, after the fifth bell, each Tomas is assigned a room. The light is endless and merciless. Will you sleep? All visitors to Varkas are given one night's accommodation in the city's only inn. It is a handsome stone mansion arranged around a pleasantly cool courtyard. Frescoes of city life are painted on the walls. Given how few visitors Varkas hosts, you suspect the inn is more usually used by philandering locals. Evening falls. Or does it? The town's five principal mirrors are mounted on coiled spring mechanisms and alter their angles subtly to create the impression of evening. Across the city, the firekeepers throw pinches of colored powder into the lamps and their quality of light yellows to a softer brightness. Uh, okay, I can... Man, there's still a ton of stuff to do, even at the end. I can see the wine-mazed lamplighter. He is dressed in saffron robes and is indeed pouring wine down the throat of a very attractive dark-eyed boy. 
You could tell him his sister is looking for him. All right, that's the one that we heard about before. We could go to the kitchens. The smells of cooking mingle with the fungus rot. But you aren't going to let that put you off your food. I have 82% chance on that with hearts. We could go to the courtyard. Cushions are arrayed around the marble fountain in the middle. Musicians pluck their instruments under the shade of the twisted yellow-leafed trees. 100% chance with mirrors for that. We could sleep. The bed is low and wide and draped with cotton sheets stamped with vegetable dye patterns in muted greens and blues. Okay. We can do that because we don't have any nightmares right now. Nice. We could don't sleep. We could don't sleep. Awesome English right there. It won't be difficult to stay awake in this constant light, but the lack of rest will take its toll. And that's a 49% chance, which isn't great. Uh, let's start by talking to the wine-mazed lamplighter. Tell him his sister is looking for him. He starts up in horror, spilling burgundy red wine everywhere. His young companion looks irritated. I'm late, he shouts. Mahir, forgive me. The Agna Hatri is going to skin me alive. He pumps your hand in gratitude. Thank you, Tomas. I won't forget this. Here, take my Arc Jewels. My Arc Jewels, wow. This belongs in a museum. Nice. Indiana Jones reference. Outlandish artifact. Assuming that colonial imperial appropriation for the purpose of hegemonic taxonomization is a suitable response to the problem of intercultural contact, which it probably is, because museums are magnificent institutions. Okay, those are worth a decent amount of money, I think, too, if I give them to the scholar. Lamplighter quality is now two. All right. Let's, um, save on 12. Let's try this kitchens thing. Smell of cooking mingles with the fungus rot. Aren't going to let that put you off your food. 82%. Go. Succeeded. The smells of cooking ming. Oh, the same thing it just said. The inn's cook makes Thick spiced stews of fungus flowers and lotus root, eaten with chunks of boiled cassava and rice imported from inland. But it is the light hungry fruit grown in the city which makes your mouth water. Tart scented oranges and bruised yellow bananas, pineapples bursting with juice, tender coconuts with the silky white flesh scooped out and sap sweet on the tongue. Do you not eat meat, you ask in wonderment? And the inn's cook calls to Mahir for strength. It is forbidden to eat the flesh of living creatures, he says. Lucky the Varkasi don't fancy the Z-faring life. It's night, although there is no darkness in Varkas. Time to sleep. Succeeded in a challenge. But nothing happened. I didn't get anything for succeeding in that challenge. That's weird. All I can do now is sleep or don't sleep. Well, I'm going to sleep. You know, might as well. Gained 10 terror from sleeping here. And I got a nightmare thing. Well, that sucks. Sleeping here is badness. Sleep. You fall into sleep easily despite the bright light. But your dreams are full of whispering, glittering smokes. Mirror vapors that coil into reflection warping shapes. You see your limbs bend, your skin slough, your eyes twist. You wake with your heart pounding. Your nostrils are full of the fungal rot smell of Varchus. Your body is as it always was. But somehow, that is not as comforting as it should be. Well, that's kind of sucked. Let's just try something else. Can't fire through islands, especially if someone's living on them. Wait. Oh, no. I fucked up. I, apparently you can't save in, like, the middle of your progress here. Hold on. We're gonna zo zoom through some shit real quick. Alright, we're gonna choke on the smell. We need waved over by the Zailers. 
We're going to ask the guard a few questions. Name is not Tomas. Tell me about the light. Tell me about your job. Tell me about customs. Out of questions. Port report. Push to enter. Talk to the firekeeper. Talk to the white cloaked guard. Talk to the jewel turban youth. Continue explorations. Go to the hospital. Check out the fungal ward. Check out the mirrorless room. Check out the open ward. Uh, leave. Something happened differently this time. Because after coming out of the hospital, I still have options to go to all these places. What did I do? How did I fuck up? Okay, so he's giving me a tip here. Alright, I almost forgot to mention in case you didn't know. When you're zailing, leaving your light on greatly extends the range by which you can identify structures and will also permanently light up islands. That lightning doesn't seem to serve any real purpose, but if you're anything like me, your completionism will not let you go without lighting all of them. <laughs> yeah, well, that doesn't sound like something I, I would uh, feel compelled to do to light them all like that, but that's interesting. Good to know, though. Then we go to the inn. We talk to the wine maze lamplighter. We go to the kitchens. We succeed. And what if we try don't sleep? Is a 49% chance. Succeeded. A meditative evening. Up late, reading, thinking, watching. The shouts from the streets die as Varka sleeps. But you're tired the next morning. Gained five terror. Time to go. Till next time. Succeeded in a hearts challenge. Dawn in Varkas. Outsider time in Varkas is strictly rationed. Each morning at dawn, the guard visits the inn to eject any Tomas they find. They're polite, but very definite. Into the dark. Return, the guard tells you. Return, but not yet. With that, they usher you into the darkness beyond the walls. You blink mirror dazzles from your eyes. It's cold out here. Gained a terror. Nails of the towers. Quality is gone. That's all for now. So I just gained... Not yet, Tamas. The blue cloaked guard watches you narrowly. Turbulent times. We dare not admit too many outsiders at once. Wait your turn. Return soon. Alright. They have no shops here. So let's see. I don't have the campaigner. Or the haunted doctor. Interesting. Alright. Well, I guess we can't do anything else here. I mean, I think in theory I could I could pull this little move and just be like and just wait for a thing and then and then come back, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to explore No, not the right, no. Oh, but I do need to save again before I leave. I got the adventurous, yeah.
Fuck it, we'll go all the way to the corner over here. Let's see what, what there is to see. We'll follow the coast, like we've been doing. No, no, giant thing of scary. Milliner bats, 460 health, I think not. We have entered the Sea of Statues. Giants gape at us. King Eater's Castle rises ahead, where fools give up their future. Let me just check something real quick. Do I have the thingy? I do, right? The suppressor. So I can, I can go full power any fucking time I want without worrying about my engine exploding. For like, getting away from scary things. This is a pretty cool looking area. There's Banning Bluff. Nope! Uh oh. That doesn't look good. We're going to try to skirt the southern edge of this thing really, really carefully. Tasex Fury. We're going to be really super careful right now. And not really get sucked in. Well, the hull took some damage there. But... Wait, is this it? Is this the fucking... Hold on, I'm not going off the edge. Last time I went off the edge of some shit, some shit it was terrible. Hmm. I should do it for science though, shouldn't I? No, I'm not ready for science right now. After I've explored everything and I need to like do the last bits of exploration to see what's going on, then I'll come go off the edge, but this is cool looking over here though. Pennington. Oh, there's a port right there. What is this crazy place? This place looks... It's like a huge arena. Oh, there's faces under there. Alright, we're gonna go to Pennington. Oh, I see. There's giant statues under the water, just like it said. A hand sticking up out of there, and there's the face. There's another hand. King Eater's Castle. Wild and crazy. Echoes stalk you through the colonnades. Saving my game stalks me through the colonnades. The most colossal fist bump of all time! Yeah. How am I supposed to pronounce your name, Sido Optionum? Sido? Cedo? Skiddo? Is that, is that Latin? Sido optionum? And if it is, what is it Latin for? Okay. An old veracity lives here. In the far reaches of the Z. This is a pretty, place is pretty crazy looking. No choice. No, like, K-N-O-W choice. Really? Interesting.
The priests are long gone, but sacrifices are still made. Perhaps you have come here to make a sacrifice. Perhaps the sacrifice is you. I can't do an act of burning faith because I don't have enough terror. If I did have enough terror, which god holds sway here? Storm? Stone? Salt? Perhaps no god that is elsewhere named, but if you feed it, it will calm your mind. Could use up fuel and supplies to lower terror. Okay, that's nice to know. I could lose my mind. Offer your thoughts at the altar. It says, do not do this. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, apparently I have too much terror to do that. Do not do this. That's amazing. Eat your crew. Not all of them will go easily. Do not do this. This will destroy all your crew and any human or near human officers. The struggle will wound or even kill you. Okay, no, I'm not going to. You need iron 150? Holy shit. Subtle option says, yes, to temporarily drop my irreverence. I believe the greatest tragedies and the greatest evils are done when one knows no choice. But that to the course they are committed. You mean to say, like, when somebody feels that they have no choice, but to do, like, one thing, and so in the thought that they have no choice, they end up doing something something awful because they think they have no choice? But what you're saying is, in fact, actually, people always have a choice, and they just need to know that they have a choice so that they won't do the unthinkable thing out of the false idea that they have no choice? Is that what you're saying? Because I would agree with that if that's what you're saying. If you're saying something different than that, then I might not agree with you. Um, in fact, that's one. Of, that's a pet peeve of mine. I hate it when people say I had no choice. I had no choice. I had no choice. I hate that. That irritates the shit out of me. Because you always have a choice. There is always more than one thing you could do. Even if some of those choices would result in very bad consequences for you, including your death, that doesn't mean they're not a choice. You could choose those things, including your own death in some circumstances, rather than doing another thing, which might be very bad to do. You always have a choice. I can offer my stories, all of them. What is one more departure among so many? This may take you elsewhere at the cost of all your Z stories. Choose it only if you are desperate to be somewhere else. Alright, so there's some very scary choices at this place, like some very bad things you would do here. So no, I'm not going to use up my Z stories to do this. Or I could compile a port report. Well, I always love port reports. Silence, desolation, the sense of an impending and terrible mistake. Everything is horrible. It's not really an appropriate title for a formal report, is it? Let's find something a little more clinical. <laughs> nice. Alright, well that's all we're going to do here. All the rest of these options are, well, very bad. So, let's get the fuck out of here. That's King Eater's castle for us. All right. Well, I suppose... We'll work our way back along this line. I might even stop off at Varkas again now that I've been long gone long enough to... Uh... I'm going to work my way straight across here, clearing all this black off the map, and when I get to the point where I'm north of Varkas, if I haven't run into anything else I want to port with... Port with? That's not how words work. If I haven't run into any other ports that I wish to dock at, uh, then I will turn south and go back to Varkas for round two. I would assume I will crash into that if I crash into that, so I'm going to go around it. The Sea of Statues. Let's stay out of the fog.
Oh, I should be sending out my Z-Bat. Violence within range. What is this down here? Oh, nope, 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 nope. A buttery bloom of light on the southern horizon. You approach Varkas, the mirrored city. So much nope. Discovered Jack a Dandy Stack. It's a very fancy name for what looks like just some random rock sitting there. Well, oh, there's like a huge lighthouse or something up here. I wonder if it's a light ship. Or what it is. What is that? Jellyfish. No, no. No, no. Discovered a jellyfish from the southern wall. Yeah, how about if I discover getting the fuck away from it? No, sir. No, sir, jellyfish. We're just gonna go right around you. Apparently that's just a random lighthouse with no... anything going on. You know what? I've got lots and lots and lots of fuel. I'll take a little detour here to uh, clear one more layer of this. Let's Z it up. Now to get back to your rever irreverence, let's remember the coon. To exist is a choice and we can choose to reject it. I assume you're referring to the thing from Dragon Age, right? Of the Kunari? That's like their, that's like their holy book of wisdom or whatever. I only played the first Dragon Age game. I really, really like it. I played it multiple times, Dragon Age Origins, and in fact, it was in my top five games of all time. It got knocked off by The Witcher 3. It was my fifth favorite game of all time. It got knocked off the list by The Witcher 3, though. We'll go back to Varkas. That list is now Planescape Torment, Alpha Protocol, Deus Ex Human Revolution, The Witcher 2, and The Witcher 3. Those are my five favorite games of all time. Alright, let's stock it up. Returning to Varkas. Annual save. And we will find out what new things Varkas has to offer us in this second uh, visit in our next episode. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you for watching. This is going to be... This... Whoa! I'm fucking up my... Dude, I have said that outro to videos literally thousands of times now. Literally thousands. And I still fuck it up sometimes. Like, how do I fuck that up? It's the same. It's a few words. It's the same every time. Why would I fuck that up? Okay. Thank you for watching. <laughs> This has been Josiah Plays Sunless Sea, because that was really hard to say. <laughs>